In this episode, I will tell you how you can use Node Interactive Shell to run application code within your app environment. If you prefer reading instead of watching, the entire script for the cast will be available on our blog. I will paste a link to it in the comments below. We will be working on an example Express server which has two resources, users and their favorite places. The application uses MongoDB with Mongoose client library for storing data. The idea of the application is that only a finite set of users can use it. You cannot register new members by using the API. So how to add the first users in this case? As you can see, users have a password field which is encrypted, so we cannot simply add new records straight to the database. But we see that there is a create function which can be used inside the app. So let's invoke this function by using so-called REPL, which stands for read eval print loop. You can launch it by simply running the node command in the app folder. So let's do this. Now we have a new process running with the same set of dependencies as we have in our app. So let's connect with the database. Require it first and connect. Resolve the promise with console log. Having that, we can now create a new user. Let's require the user model. And evoke our function. In rep, we can use the tab key to see autocompletes. Here is a list of all properties of the user model and there is our create method. Let's write the first three letters and use tab again. It was autocompleted. Go back to the code for a minute. Function takes a name, email and password. Since it is an async function, it returns a promise. I fill it with my credentials and console log the output. So let's pass email, password and finally name. Finish with console log. And new user has been created. Okay, as you probably noticed, we used promises instead of async await statements. Node has an experimental support for that. Let's turn this on. To exit the repo, hit Ctrl+C C twice. Now, let's run it with async support. By default, Node stores history of your previous commands, so you can use up-down arrows to find them. So let's connect with the database and require our user. Now we can count our users in the database with an await statement. And it works. Let's exit again by using Ctrl C twice. Most probably we will be performing the same initialization every time we will use repo, so let's automate that by creating our own interactive shell. In order to do that, Add a new REPL script to the package.json file. Since we will be using REPL API, we have to pass experimental REPL await flag via node options. And create our REPL.js file. In this file, require REPL first and start it with new prompt message, which will be JSCast. Let's run it and see if it works. Perfect. Close it for now. Now let's initialize database every time we launch it. First, reuse our .env file and load all variables with .env config. I covered env files in episode 6, so if you didn't have a chance to see it, it may be worth to check it out. Next. Require mongoose. Now create an async run function. And connect with the database within this function. Finally, use context property to pass our model to the repo console. This way, we won't have to require it every time. And invoke this function. Let's see how it works right now. Let's try to count all users again. It works. 
There are a couple of tricks when working with a REPL command. First of all, you can enter the editor mode with dot editor command. Here you can use or paste the entire block of code and execute it by pressing Ctrl plus D. So let's see how it works. Create a variable, use it for storing number of documents. And finally increment it. Then run Ctrl plus D and here is our output. The next thing is that there are two special variables. Underscore holding the output of the last command. So use it to catch our output. And there is an underscore error which holds the last error thrown. Ok, this was everything. Now you can use your interactive node shell and check out how application works with real data and easily find and fix problem. To discover more things about the repo, visit the documentation. I will paste the link to it in the comments below. If you like this post, subscribe to the channel and see you next time.